channel. Hey, you know what time it is, no press fam? Welcome everyone to another episode of The Beatdown, the segment and channel where two worlds collide. I am your host, Class, and my co-host, Biggs, doing it big, baby, and keeping it 100 steps. And if you guys enjoy our content, you know what you can do. You can share, you can like, you can subscribe, or you can turn on your notifications to get the latest episodes, which we always put out every week. Yeah, and on today's episode, we're, uh, we're going to do something real interesting. Um, somebody had recommended this idea to me a while back, and I just thought to myself, why haven't I done this episode? I waited long enough, so I decided, why not do it now? I was going to wait until maybe the end of the year or start of the new year, but I said, screw it. I'm going to do it right now. And I'm going to start things off by representing Marvel Comics Loki. It matters not. All right, let's get into the brief origin story. So, Loki started off getting adopted by Odin. Odin had a firstborn blood son, Thor. Now, Thor and Loki were actually pretty tight. Thor only uh, pretty much saw Loki as a brother and nothing else. Never no blood or blood, blood or without blood, he was always considered a brother to him in his eyes. But Loki started growing jealous as he was getting older of Thor because Thor was pretty damn good in a lot of things, you know, athletic wise and everything. So Loki decided he's going to focus his strong suit on what he's good at, magic and science. Eventually the two grow up, but he gets, you know, Loki again is still jealous of his brother because Thor gets to rule Asgard. He's going to be the king one day and he, Loki doesn't like that. So Loki starts growing such a jealousy, a resentment towards his brother that he decides that he won't stop in, until nothing, until he takes Thor's hammer and takes Thor down officially. And that's pretty much the brief origin story of Loki. Powers, abilities, and feats. Let's get into it, guys. All right. Uh, Frost giant, Asgardian physiology, uh, superhuman strength, superhumanly dense tissue. Yeah, he has he's a pretty strong uh, body. Uh, superhuman durability, regenerative healing factor, superhuman stamina, superhuman longevity, sorcery, telekinesis, mystical energy blast, mystical force fields, illusion casting, teleportation, psionics, um, shape shifting, transmutation, physical enhancement, enchantment, genius intelligence, all speak, skilled combatant, and his weapons of choice is fire sword, Odin's ring, and Norn stones. He can lift 50 tons. Punched a building down with one punch, cut down a street light, lifted a car with one hand as well during a fight with Thor. So he, while he was battling Thor, he was able to lift a car with one hand. Loki broke a metal door that was nine inches thick and hardened steel. Uh, Loki held his own in raw strength against the Silver Surfer. The Silver Surfer is one of those, he can destroy a planet just, just by passing through it. So yeah, that's saying something. Um, Loki took a blow from Thor that was a dull force of the universe. A dull force of the universe is, is a pretty extreme hit, okay? It's one of the most fearsome attacks you'll ever get in your lifetime, especially if it's a universal level attack. It's got to say something. That on one of Spider-Man's encounters with him, they threw down. He couldn't put a dent on Loki. Rogue tried to absorb his power and couldn't do it. Okay, that's saying something. Loki had his head cut off, picked it up, and put it back on, okay? One shot at the entire X-Men. One shot it. One shot it means he took only one blow to take them all out. So we're good. Sent Apocalypse flying. Apocalypse is the creation, creator of mutants, supposedly. So let's keep that in mind. So let's talk about the end game. First off, let's talk about if these two actually got hand-to-hand -hand mono and mono. Loki would beat her. Uh, he has a immense amount of strength. He can lift 50 tons. He lift one car by himself. I'm pretty sure... Uh, if, if Satana was left with just a little bit of strength magic to go on, I do believe that Loki up close could probably throw one mean swing, punch her hard enough to maybe break, hurt her, uh, like stop her chest or something from, uh, from existing. I think Loki can do that with that kind of strength that he has. Our thing is the Norn Storms, Norn Stones, they are capable of altering a lot of things. So he could alter her powers into being no more. Maybe he can get her to not even use her powers. Maybe she needs to blink in order to create her powers. He can alter that. He can change the environment at a moment's notice, kind of putting her off her game in that way. Because Loki does have, he has the Norn Storm, he's capable of doing those type of feats. A couple other points I'll make. 
um, his skin is so durable. So even if, let's say, Satana decides to try to throw a, 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 a tank at him or something, he'll be able to withstand that type of tremendous pain or, you know, type of heavy thing, object being thrown at him. Let's let's say it like that. I guess I said it all. Blah. But anyways, on top of the fact that he has a pretty tough, tough, thick skin, he is also capable of shape shifting. So if he wanted to, he could possibly shape him, shape shift into Satara, who is Satana's father. Kind of psych her out in that way. If he, in a moment's notice, uh, psychs her out, makes her think that that's actually his fa uh, her father, maybe they get close enough and then he switches and then goes for that quick kill from that moment. Just goes for a direct blade using one of his uh, weapons or anything like that. Because if Loki has the element of surprise, you know he can, he'll be able to execute perfectly. Lastly, the Odin's Ring. Now the Odin's Ring is gonna lay a tremendous amount of power smack down on Satana. Satana getting hit a couple times by that Odin's Ring power might, it's gonna, it's gonna take a toll. It's every time she has to keep taking those attacks, she's gonna have to recover. That's gonna take a toll. Eventually giving Loki the opportunity he needs to seek in order to find that spot where he needs to execute her when she doesn't see it coming, which Loki is known for. So. I, what I'm saying is, with Loki's incredible mischief, his magical abilities, the fact that he has all those tools in his arsenal to back him up, I do believe that Loki has Satana's number and will have her saying, Abra Kadabra. <laughs> all right, and I'll be representing DC Comics Satana. Let's talk about the brief origin story of Satana. So, her mother, Sedella, Sedella, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, she was from another dimension uh, that had, because they were born with homo magi blood, which means you're born with magic in your blood. Uh, one day, Satara, who is also an extreme magic magician, uh, powerful magician, uh, goes into this dimension fighting something and he meets her for the first time. Uh, eventually, the two kind of connect in a special way, start falling in love with each other, and then they have a child named Satana. Uh, unfortunately, Sedela had to fake her own death in order to go back to her homeland while Satara and Satana had to be without a mother. Eventually, they were able to get, you know, the mother, trying to get the mother back and they did, but something happened and Sedela had to sacrifice herself for the greater good of her daughter in order for her to save the world and Satana was able to, you know, gain the powers of Sedela. It's magic, which means that she was more powerful than ever. And that's pretty much the brief origin story of Satana. Powers, abilities, and feats. Let's get into it, guys. This is a big list. Magic, element control, <clears throat> pyrokinesis, generate heat and manipulate magical fire. Chir chirokinesis, generate cold and manipulate magical ice crystals. Electrokinesis, generate electricity and manipulate magical lightning. Hydrokinesis, generate and manipulate magical water. Geokinesis, generate and manipulate magical rocks. Aerokinesis, generate and manipulate magical winds. Uh, photokinesis, generate and manipulate magic lights. Um, umbrakinesis, umbrakinesis, um, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Generate and manipulate magic shadows. Telekinesis, telepath, teleportation, dimensional travel, reality alteration, deflection, chronokinesis, weather manipulation, enrich blast, energy construct creation, energy transference. Flight, force field, healing, phasing, size alteration, transformation, prestidigation, prestidigations, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, prestidigations, uh, hypnosis, meditation, astral projection, hand to hand combat, advanced uh, occultalism, I'm hoping I said that right, occultalism, and multilingualism. Okay, she stops time and all of creation, defeated the upside down man. Overpowered John Constantine can damage Sunbreaker. Uh, dodged an attack from the Spectre, turning demons into stones. She can send you into another dimension. She can make time go backwards. Took on Lobo, stabilized the whole and time and space. Was able to steal powers by summoning demons inside of her. Removed Martian Manhunter's Manhunter from her mind. Okay, that's impressive. Let's talk about the end game. There are three three things I'm going to talk about. One, um, the, the there's a sword that Loki does have. If he brings that fire sword out, she can probably control the fire elements out of it. So it could backfire on him in that way if he needs if she needs to. Another thing is she could do again like something like Doctor Strange did in the movie, repeating herself, or maybe even time traveling back to make the mistake or correct the mistakes to each attack move that's been thrown out there. She is capable of doing such things. 
better is that she can phase through things. So even if Loki decides to throw anything at her, even the whole kitchen, she'll be able to phase through it. So there's not really that much she can do. And on top of that, Loki kind of needs weapons to kind of summon certain powers to travel on certain things or to do certain things. So Tana just needs to say it and then she's capable of doing anything. She could alter reality just by uttering words. So even though Loki needs a tool in order to kind of be able to do that, Zatanna doesn't. Another thing to consider is that Zatanna could take her, take Loki to the upside down world, where the upside down man was, or sorry, take Loki to the world where she took upside down man. In order to conjure powers, you have to have a belief. So you have to believe and, and since Loki doesn't really believe anything besides in like, you know, conquering and ruling the world, that's not really much of a belief. I guess Satana would have much more of an advantage in this realm than he was. So she'd be, she'd be able to conjure her powers a lot more easier and a lot more quicker than Loki was because Loki would still need to try to figure out where the heck he is and what he needs to do in order to conjure his abilities. All right, another thing to consider is I'm rubber, your glue situation, but a more powerful sense where it bounces off of her and sticks back to you kind of thing. Well, Satana could conjure a spell where if Loki attacks her, that she might be able to make that spell bounce back off of her and then use the power to go twice as hard on Loki. So let's say he decides to throw some lightning at her. She might be able to conjure a spell that bounces that lightning back and hits him 10 times stronger than he brought it and then hit him harder that way. So there's that poss possibility. Well, here are two final points I'll make. So Satana is capable of a lot of things. And I think that she's also capable of bobbing and weaving, dodging. So if anything Loki throws at her, it's not going to be any, like I said, she still has a phasing ability. She can also magically uh, erase those things. Maybe she can even throw it back at him. So he, anything he tries to throw isn't going to be anything to her. So let's say she, he decides to try to get this fight into a close range environment. I think the best way Satana could win in this fight is taking him to Earth. So from my understanding, Loki is not very strong on Earth. Uh, he's considered a little more weaker on Earth, which gives Satana much more of an advantage. So just even that little bit of weakness just gives her the fighting edge she needs to put Loki down for the count. So like I said, she has the, she has the ability to travel back and do repeats and try to figure out another strategy. The ability to use a spell to bounce back his magic against him and then maybe attack it stronger. She has a world she can go to where she might be able to have more of an element chance since he doesn't isn't familiar with it. She can take him to Earth and throw down with him there, which gives him a slight, well, slighter, slighter weakness than he normally takes on the strength wise, giving Satana the victory she needs. As always, no press fam, it's not up to me. It's not up to Biggs, it's up to you guys. So, if you guys liked my argument, you know what you can do? You can hashtag Loki. And if you guys like my argument, you know what you can do? You can hashtag Satana. And as always, no press fam, we really appreciate you guys. Catch you guys later. Peace.